In the previous video, we did one through four. Today, we're gonna do number five. So let's see, how can we estimate the square root of three? We're gonna go over several ways, but one might start with saying, okay, it's between one squared and two squared, because that would be one times one or one. This would be two times two or four. All right, so we might split the difference and say, let's try 1.5 squared. Now, if you've been practicing your tricks, 1.5 can be thought of as just a 15. So 15 squared, that's trick two, or trick one, uh, trick two. So trick two would be it's one times two, so that's two, five times five is 25. So this is 225. Also, this is just a perfect square you should have memorized. So this is 225, but since each 1.5 has a decimal point, it would be 225 with two decimal points. So this is 2.25. So in this way, we've narrowed it down to be between 1.5 and 2. All right, now we could keep going and say, let's try 1.75 and keep getting closer and closer. I'll leave it here depending on how accurately you want it. I just wanted to show you that you can do that. Now, that's one way of doing it. Another way is by treating this 3 as a 300. Now, I know I wrote 3.00, but think of it as 300. And if you think, what perfect square do we know that's close to 300? Some of you, or a lot of you hopefully know, it's 289, which is 17 squared. So that tells us this, this is pretty close to 1.7 square. Uh, sorry, this is pretty close to 1.7, and 1.7 squared is three. So the point is, without even trying 1.5 like in the previous idea, we got very close much faster just by knowing some of our perfect squares. All right, now you might say, okay, well I know there's one squared which is one and two squared which is four, and since three is you know, in between one and four, the distance from one to four is three, and the distance from one to three is two. So you might say it's two thirds of the way from one to four. All right, so we might say, since that's the case, let's try taking a number that's two thirds of the way from one to two. So we might try one and two thirds. Now, I wanna go into, it's gonna be a little bit involved, but hang in there. There's a reason why this is gonna be a decent guess, but it's not gonna be accurate. And this has to do with concave versus convex functions. Don't worry about the term functions for now. Just look at the words concave and convex. Now a straight line is known as a linear function. It's a line, linear line. Anything that goes this way, we're gonna refer to as concave. It looks sort of like a cave. Um, and anything that's convex is gonna go the other way. Now I think of it as C comes before V and C tends to sort of fall, whereas V tends to open. C comes before V in the alphabet, so that's how I have it, that's how I remember it. Okay, what, what does this have to do with anything? So if we look at the square root function, now what is the square root function? That's what we've been doing. So the square root of one is one. The square root of four is two. The square root of nine is three. So if we plug in these points, this would be our plot. So let's say this is our X and that's our Y. All right, so let's take a look. If we go to one, we get one. This should be somewhere here. Okay, if we go to four, we get two. Now notice we have to go pretty far out to nine to get the next number. In other words, we have to travel a whole lot till we even move up one more unit. 
Now, if this were a line, we'd be moving several units consistently. If we move, say, two units here, we'd move two units here, or three units here, two units here, three units here, two units here. The rate would be consistent. It would be straight. Here, we're slowing down. So you have to go farther and farther out to keep increasing. So let's bring this back. So when we were trying to find the square root of three, and we guessed it might be one and two thirds, we're saying, okay, since three is two thirds of the way this way, let's pick a number that's two thirds of the way that way, which would be one and two thirds. So using that argument, we're basically treating this function or this equation, this curve, like a line. Now on a line, that would be correct because this would correspond to that point and we would have nailed it. In reality, the concave, because it looks like a cave, we're inside of a cave, the concave curve is actually going to be above the line. So that's the only point I want to make. Be careful when you think, oh, since it's two thirds of the way between one and four for the three, then the square root of it will be two thirds of the way between our guesses on the other side. That's not the case. All right. So with that tangent, let's try this problem. Now the question here is find the nearest integer to the square root of 2,345. Now I just want to give you guys a quick way to do this. So let's try 10. Okay, way off. Let's try 80. Way off. So we're going to try to squeeze it in. So let's try 40. All right, getting closer. So how about 50? Okay, notice that we've cornered the number. It's between 40 and 50 because these numbers are around that number. So now we're going to zoom in between 40 and 50. So what should we try next? Well, this looks like it's a little closer to 50 squared, but uh, let's just go to the middle. So 45 squared, that's trick two, remember? So it's four times five, 20, and five times five, 25. Now, at this point, we could tell this is gonna be closer to the 2,500, so maybe we wanna start going backwards. So we try 49 squared. Now, again, we could calculate this, but we're gonna use all the mental math tricks we've discussed previously. Let's review those very quickly. So, notice the difference between these is three, the difference is five, the difference is seven. So the difference between consecutive perfect squares is the next odd number. And furthermore, to get this three, we can double the one and add one. So one times two is two plus one is three. Double the two, add one, you get five. Double the three, add one, you get seven. Double the four, add one, you get nine. 16 plus nine is 25, which is five squared. So we know that 49 doubled plus one, which would be 99, would be and that 99 would be added to whatever this is to get 2,500. So instead of multiplying this, we're just gonna subtract 99 from 2,500 and get 2,401. All right, now this looks like it's getting closer. So let's move back a 97. So 97 subtracted from 2,401 would give us 23. 04. And that seems pretty close to here. Now I'm going to leave it here, but I want to mention, you might think, oh, since this looks like it's closer to 2345, it must be closer. But because of that concave convex argument before, just because it looks closer linearly doesn't mean it's closer on the curve. So I'll let you guys think about that some more, but just know that that's not an automatic argument that 48 is the better one play with it and see what your thoughts are. In the next video, 
we're going to go into a little bonus on how do you calculate the square root exactly.